Thank you. All right, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Good evening, everybody. Um, so actually, I will expect to double check our minutes from the last meeting. So the first order will just be to approve minutes from the last meeting. I just want to make sure we have a, um, a forum for that meeting we do. So just as a reminder for those of us who are here at the May 28th meeting, myself, Michael Aronson, um, Bill, Bill Morea, uh, Carla Elia and Angelica Kinga. So uh, those members who, I, it's everybody who's here, um, have a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting, May 28th. Bill Murray, motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Michael Aaron's in second. Any objections? No objections, those, meetings, those minutes are approved, thank you. Um, okay, so then we're gonna jump right into the agenda. Sorry, I'm trying to keep my notes and the updated agenda. Front of me uh, with me half a second. Okay. Um, so first up on the agenda for the new business, um, we're starting off with 81. This is planning board 05, 2023, 81, 89 South Highland Avenue. Um, the applicant is seeking an extension for a previously granted wetlands approval. Um, so this was actually originally submitted on March 26th. So we're kind of, this is a, a bit of uh, catch up. So if we can have uh, the applicant um, come forward. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Roy and members of the planning board. My name is Jessica Zalin. I'm with the law firm of Petty and Fader, and I'm here appearing on behalf of the applicant, 81 South Highland Ave LLC, in connection with its request um, for an extension of the wet permit. Um, this request was initially filed on March 26, 2024, and actually made the board's April agenda. Um, we then requested a, an adjournment of that matter to combine it. Um, with the other extensions that were going to be considered during the May meeting of this board. However, at the May meeting of this board, my colleague neglected to mention that we were also looking for the wetlands permit extension. So I am here today to request an extension of the wetlands permit. Um, this permit was granted by the board in 2022. We've received one one year extension of the permit. We're looking for a second extension um, just to allow the applicant a little more time to complete the conditions um, of the original approvals associated with this project. And I realized that you guys were here last month, but just a quick update on where you are in, in that process of approvals. Sure. Um, we actually have a meeting with village staff tomorrow, um, during which we hope to be going over the final conditions um, to move towards completion of the subdivision plan um, to be able to get that signed and recorded. So after tomorrow's meeting, I hope that we've taken a major step towards resolving this. Okay. Um, board member, oh, well, let me start off with it. Valerie, is there anything here from us to be asking an additional? No, no. Okay. Uh, Taryn, okay. Uh, board members, any questions? Okay. Um, I know we, we did, like I said, we talked about this last last month, so i um, glad we're getting everything caught up. So one, off, one month off, but close. Um, very good, I have a, a motion from the board to approve the, uh, the one-year extension. Maria, motion to approve the one year extension. Michael Aronson, second the motion. Um, thank you. And as far as doing a roll call in here, because I know normally Maddie carries that. Um, do you mind? I can still um, do sorry. it if you want a voice okay. from above. I know sure. it's, it's it's that's wigging me out a little bit, but but that's great. The, the voice of God can, uh, um, yeah, let's do a roll call, please. Thanks, Maddie. All right. Uh, Michael Aronson. Aye. Carla Elia. Aye. Bill Morea? Aye. Angelica Kanganis? Aye. And Chair Roy? Aye. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to note that we have uh, board member Aaron Talbot just joined us. So um, we are running on, yes, we have one, two, four, five regular board members plus an alternate. So all, all board members present are um, eligible to vote on all items tonight. Um, you know, it's okay. We just that that was our that was well that will serve as our attendance for the moment. Um, let's reiterate: we have board member Eric Talbot, board member Michael Aronson, uh, board member Seth Roy, board member Carla Elia, board member uh, Phil Morea, and alternate and Delvin and Gas present tonight. Um, thank you. And all right, so the next item on sorry new business is going to be planning board 05-2022. This is sixty two Water Street. 
Um, this is a request for a, a second request for an extension of the site plan and conditional use approvals that were granted in 2022. Um, so if we could have the applicant come up and give us a status update. And be happy to. First, I wanted to do, reintroduce myself, Bob Fettigan. I'm the managing member of the YMLLC. I brought my son, James, who has managed the property for more than 10 years with me tonight. Um, last year, you might remember that we didn't get a start on it because our architect got you know, critically ill. Thankfully, he's come back full tilt. And when we started in late uh, 23, looking at it, two things conspired for us to not go forward. One was high commodity prices when we you remember coming out of COVID in 22, distribution lines were screwed up, uh, pricing was out the wazoo. So stuff that we had priced that a hundred was now 170, that type of magnitude. Those prices have now backed off as people have got more realistic. Real estate has kind of slowed down. They are looking for business. The other thing was the mortgage rates. Um, we're, we presently have a mortgage for over a million dollars at a bit over 4%. We're going to our bank to check out the borrowing environment at seven and a half to eight. Uh, we kind of negotiated out to the point where once we build, pull a building permit and start, they're going to give us a building loan, but we won't lock in the rate until the project is complete. And we would think that that would be sometime in 25 uh, time frame. So, we're, we're anxious to do it, but it's just uh, two things that you know prevented us from doing it. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, so where specifically are you in the building permitting process at this point? So we have not uh, pulled a building permit, nor do we intend to until the end of this year. The Fed has said that probably in December they'll lower rates. We want to see that they're going in the right direction because not only did we have to refinance what we have on our books now, but we're talking about in excess of a million dollars of new investment. So we would anticipate uh, pulling the building permit sometime in the first quarter of 25. The project will probably run about a year because we have tenants in this space that we have to give some notice to Nobody has more than a 30 day lease at this point because we had intended to start. Um, once we do that, then we have the deconstruction and the reconstruction. And nothing in the project. And we talked about, you know, cost of materials and the cost of construction being one of the reasons for the delay, but nothing has materially changed with the project to the date. Uh, no, material has swung in our favor, and I think it will continue to do so. Uh, because it just got out of sight with COVID. It was just uh, as much uh, those vendors having limited, limited ability to get the raw materials in any kind of timely fashion. So they just had to protect themselves. And that went across the board with roofing materials, whether it was roofing or, in our case, the commodity is metal, all of the hallways for self storage. Is, is light gauge, 20 gauge, steel painted white or blue. So that's really what hit us. Okay. Um, staff, any questions that we should be asking? No, I do not have any. Okay. Um, board members, questions? No. Um, okay, so I mean, my, my only comment is just, you know, it, it's good, we, we do like to see, you know, some degree of progress. I think you've given us, you know, kind of an explanation of where you are. Um, but you know, if you know, I just want to make sure that we're on track for that Q1 permit yeah. as you're talking about 2045. Yeah, okay. Um, can I have a motion from the board to approve the uh, extensions? Is, and again, just to be just to be clear, it's this is the second extension of a site plan and condition needs approval. Michael Aronson motion to approve a second extension of the site plan and conditional use approvals. 
Connolly, a second the motion. And we will do a roll call, please. All right, Michael Aronson. Aye. Eric Talbot. Aye. Carla Elia. Aye. Phil Morea. Aye. Angelica Kanganis. Aye. And Shia Roy. Aye. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for the chairman. Very good. Okay. Um, next on the agenda, we have a, uh, it's a BAR application 15 2024 at 2 Gilbert Park. Um, this is a BAR request for BAR approval of a new addition in the rear yard as well as a new uh, front porch. So we have the applicant. So you can uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. And um, and actually, so again, Maddie, sorry, just working remotely um, or upstairs. Um, <laughs> we put the, let's get the architectural drawings up on the share screen. You got it. And so, as we walk, work our way through. Sorry, I'll get used to this, I promise. Go ahead, yeah, okay. yep, please. Uh, and so try to speak into the mic to the sure. degree that you can, I realize this. Mic? Yeah, definitely. all right. Strange. All right, here we go. Uh, my name is Corey Spencer. I'm one of the owners, along with my wife, of two Gilbert Parks, just our personal residence. And we're seeking approval for an extension, adding a bedroom, extending the kitchen, and a front porch. That's it. All right. Um, yeah, so we'll let's start with the photos. So, so this is all the existing house, the existing siding, roofing material. The the plan is to match those materials. Yeah, match everything as closely as possible to what exists. Same siding, same style, just better. Bigger. Okay. Um, Maddie, maybe we can just go to the to the building elevations. Uh, there we go. Yep. Uh, let's let that depixelate. There we go. Um, okay, so it's that section. Sorry, just to, so we can kind of understand what we're looking at. Sure. Um, so the addition is that is that volume with the three windows in the in the back that it's kind of a, a bump out. So if you look at the bottom of the two rendered drawings. Correct. So the top uh, left corner I can recognize easily as the back, facing the back square on. That's facing the extension that would be pushed out. So you're looking at the bedroom on the right side and the extended kitchen on the left side, basically. Okay. And then the drawing right below that is the front with a porch. Which is whatever. The, where, or, yeah, so sorry, maybe I'm trying to understand where that, that porch. Oh. Yeah, it's real subtle Yeah. in the drawing. I'm not even sure it's, yeah. I mean, so it's essentially an overhang Yeah. with a cement. Got it, it. So got it. Really, yeah, it's hard to see. Anything. So that revision cloud, we're seeing a like a just a little shadow yep. of a slightly different roof slope that's exactly. projecting out over that little alcovey space. Yeah, over those uh, three larger windows. That's that's it. That's the okay. quote unquote porch. But the actual all right. And so where's the where's the entrance door? Just in that. Yeah. So the entrance door is actually to the left. So that the front there where the two windows are, it comes out. The front door is on the left. So Okay, so actually on that alternate view where you can see the overhang, you can see a full rec, that's the front door. And none of those windows or doors are changing, you're just adding the roof. Um, okay. Correct. Maddie, maybe we just go up to the plan so we can just get a better sense of what's being pushed out in the back. Um, yeah, yep, yeah. there we go. So we can actually see in the, yeah. on the, that, on the top of that drawing, right, that's, that's the, um, really the top of that, the, the plan that's on the, the lower just kind of yeah lower center yeah so that plan at the top of that that plan you can see is that that's what's being bumped out so there's yeah so at the top of that drawing that's what's essentially being added the yeah. yep kitchen being extended and then a third a third bedroom okay and so when we're so now sorry go back to the elevations just want to make sure we can all have this so that's right and that's what as you described I think very clearly before so on the top left of those of those elevations, that's that volume being pushed out. Great. Um, all right, I'll open this one up to the board for for kind of questions and thoughts. There is another thing also the garage is being prepared. yeah. Okay. So it's gonna the garage door is gonna come off and you're gonna end up with um, I assume it's gonna be an additional living space so windows. Yeah, forgot to mention. So the existing garage built into the house that's gonna be taken up as living space. So you won't see it. It doesn't change the outside of the house. But the, 
the garage door will come off and then it'll just be a, uh, a window. Which, which way is the garage facing? So the garage is facing the front. So uh, we looked at the rear section. If you if you scroll back to where we were trying to describe, yeah. So, so when you look at the front of the house, where we were just talking about the front door, if you look to the right, you'll okay. see double window. That is where the garage entry, that's where the garage door was. Understood. And that's where you, you, you can see the dotted line of the garage door on that one. Right. And so those windows will match the other windows yep. on the facade. Correct. Okay. Board member? I'm just having a little trouble with the <laughs> um, Not sure I understand again where the, we're looking at the rear of the property. There are three windows with the overhang. I'm not sure I understand where the, is it the back door to the property or the yeah. front door? Or so to your left, if we stay on, yeah, sorry. If we stay on that page, yeah, the bottom drawing to your left is the front of the house. Very bottom. That's not shadow. It's just that's a that's a section. Let's look at the, oh, the four. Look at the four. Yeah, the yeah, so four. So the side. grayscale uh, drawing to your left is it's at the middle of the screen right now. Mm -hmm. That's the front of the house. So to the left is stays exactly the same. That gable those two windows, the middle windows stay exactly the same. There's just a quote unquote porch, which is a piece of concrete slab and an overhang that'll be added. And then to the right where the two double windows are, that's where the garage door is now. It'll be replaced with that. And where's the front door? The yeah, so the reason why this is confusing is the house isn't flat. The double windows to the left is a gable extension that comes out. Okay. So. Essentially, the house is an L, so you're looking at the L, the double windows on the left side extend outward. The front door is actually to the right of that. So you walk into the house sideways, sideways. into the L. Maddie, maybe so you can just go the, the, the house plan one yeah. more time. Yeah. Yeah, so the bottom section, if you look at the bottom right there, the front door is all the way down. Yep. Yeah, oh. right there. And then you can see where the garage was, which is kind of on that opposite wall. That's where that overhang is, that 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 kind of dotted line. It's actually a relative, it's a pretty big overhang. Um, that's kind of covering over that little crook of the L, I guess. But now it's a T because you've got the addition on the back side. Now it's a T, yeah. <laughs> Huge upgrade, L of the T. And then there's also at the top of the building, that's getting bumped out as well. Yes. So the bump out of it is two rooms at the top. That's it's, it's, it's not an, an additional. Oh, there's an additional bedroom on the left, and then it's an extension of the existing kitchen. Yeah. And then I guess, well, if there are other, maybe we'd also go to the photos and yeah, still right. open up just for for other questions from the board. Just materially, I just want to make sure we're we're all comfortable and on the same page. Um, I know it's an addition, so you're matching everything that's existing. You said so this, but I, this is where I led with. I know, but just to go back, um, <laughs> what is the existing siding? Is it vinyl or is it? No, it's um, it's uh, it's wood, uh, clapboard. Okay, so we're just gonna do clapboard again. So painted. Mm -hmm. And I, I noticed that the existing photos there's almost like a beadboard, like a vertical beadboard on the eaves. Is that going to be? Yeah, the plan is to match it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the windows are are white vinyl, correct. And the new roofing tiles will match the existing roofing tiles as close as possible. Yeah, that's the plan. So was that that last picture? Was that the area where that's going to be bumped out right so, there? So that actually yes. So on the left side, that extends back. So right now you're looking. Uh, you're looking at the front of the house, looking towards the backyard. That section will just go back from I step. Other questions? Got, again, just just for the record, gutters will be the same. Yep. It's, a, it's a white. Yeah. Uh, as boring right. as possible. 
<laughs> just just for clarity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, I have, well, I'll just really quickly staff, are there any uh, questions or points that we should be uh, asking? I do not have any. Um, can I have a motion to open a public hearing on this application? Angelica King Annis, motion to open a public hearing. Michael Aaron, second. Any objections? No objections. We're now in a public hearing. Is there anybody uh, either in the room or on Zoom to who would like to speak to this application? Oh. If you're on Zoom and you would like to speak to this application, you can use the hand raise function on Zoom. Don't see Very any fun. hands other than maybe Maddie's, but um, Maddie, I don't know if you realize your hand is up. Um, oh, that's no. just the cursor. But uh, okay, I don't see any hands. Can um, have, and I, there's nobody in the room for the record uh, to speak to the application. Can I have a motion to uh, close the public hearing? Michael Aronson, motion to close the public hearing. Bill Murray, a second. Okay. Um, so I guess I mean, at this point, I think, I think this is pretty straightforward. Can we give a, a motion to approve the application? I believe you have a motion to approve the um, application. Bill Murray, a second. And a roll call. Okay, Michael Aronson. Aye. Eric Talbot. Aye. Carla Elia. Aye. Bill Murray. Aye. Angelica Kanganis. Aye. And Chair Roy. Aye. All right. Thank you very much. Thank good you. luck. Have a good night. Yep. All right. Um, all right. So we're going to move on now to um, part three of the agenda, which is continuing business. So the first item on the list is uh, 237 North Island. And this is a uh, project that has been seeking a site plan and BR approvals for renovations and alterations to the building facade. Um, so I'm probably going to just uh, Valerie, put you on the spot for a moment. Just kind of give us an update where we are the last time when we looked at this project. Sure. So I think the uh, at the last time you looked at the, this project, the board just had um, you know wanted some additional information on the site plan. Um, the applicant did provide uh, responses back to both the planning and engineering um, comments, and we ha still have additional information that we're requesting and. Uh, specifically certain site plan elements that we'd like this board to dive deeper into, um, specifically the internal circulation, I think from both engineering and planning's perspective. And we can get into the details as you uh, review the site plan. Very good. And actually, as we start that, and then I'll, I'll give the, op the applicant the opportunity just to kind of um, give us, you know, walk us through what's changed and then we'll, we'll go through staff comments. But yeah, we could have a copy of the actual site plan um, in front of us, and uh, then I'll bring the applicant in, and you guys can go uh, give, give us your update. But. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Corey Salomo from Zenon and Steinmetz here tonight on behalf of the applicant. Uh, Peter Saltakis from Kimley Horn is with me this evening. Valerie just kind of did the brief intro that I was going to do, so I'm just going to turn it right over to Peter to walk through the changes we've made in this response to the conference. Great. Hey, good evening, everyone. Peter Saltakis with Kimley Horn. We've made several plan changes based on the comments received previously from the memos and uh, comments on the planning board. So um, just from memory, I know some things that were discussed were, are we going to be putting things, <clears throat> excuse me, on the exterior of the building and the applicant is not looking to propose anything along the front of the building in terms of storage, like um, freezers, ice, firewood. However, they are considering looking towards the top right of the site. Um, there's a striped area right now that is not used for parking. And should there be things like that that would be sold in the future at the convenience store, that is where they would look to place them on site. Other items that we have addressed since the previous meeting include the submission of a photometric plan, um, the addition of a dimension to show the drive aisle width in the front of the building, and then some things on the erosion and sediment control plan in terms of construction, construction fencing, as well as vehicle maneuvers throughout the site for the fire apparatus, the garbage refuse truck, uh, a fuel truck and passenger vehicles as well. Um, so these next few sheets that we're looking through the site plan show vehicles circulating throughout the site. The first two show vehicles entering from both sides of the property. Um, and right now we, we don't have large concerns at this time, but of course I understand there are concerns from the board and we want to address those this evening. Um, I, know, I know a few things changed here and there. I know that we received comments um, in the past day from both um, Nelson Poporhees and Colored Sessions, and we have reviewed the comments and are ready to speak to them. So 
at this time, I'd like to open um, discussion to any questions or comments or concerns that I could address and speak to. Yeah, and, and I, I think it's almost so. I mean, there's a couple of pieces. Maybe we'll start with the easier pieces, and then we'll we'll work towards the more, more difficult. I, if we could put the photometric plan up there, so it does look like. And I know that there are some comments from staff that there's some spillage. Are you guys working on reviewing that? And I wanted to address where the area of concern of this spillage was because the bright, brightest part at the property line is towards the northeast of the site, so plan right. And we did that because those are parking spaces controlled by our easement and the adjacent property is owned by our owner. And we felt that it was necessary to have that level of brightness for those parking spaces from a safety perspective. But if there's other cases of spillage that are too much, I would be happy to look into them and tone them down. We're currently showing back shields and we did propose those back shields in our modeling for the lighting plans. So that is a consideration that we did make. So I don't know if that would require a variance because it specifically has in section 270-31, artificial lighting facilities of any kind with light sources visible beyond the lot lines are prohibited. So that would theoretically fall into that. I don't know, Karen or Joe, if they can get a variance for that particular section, but that might be something that you might have to pursue. Would it be possible that a letter from the property owner that has this easement um, satisfy that requirement? I don't know if the, yeah, that's, I, I would stay away from, I, I would help, let Taryn help me answer that question, but I also, if there was an easement that's that specific, I would imagine if there's an easement that specifically allowed for that light spill, it was like a light easement. I don't know if that would. So I, Okay, so I know we referenced chapter 27031 saying that there is no spillage permitted. Is that meaning a level of foot candle of zero? Because our design standard is typically half a foot candle of the property line. So I don't know if that can be something that works with y'all. I, I don't think it can be negotiated. I mean, it specifically says prohibited any uh, any light source visible beyond the lot lines are prohibited. So I think you might have to show that maybe that they're not visible beyond the lot lines, but you have half a foot candle, so I would okay. assume it would, is. It, would it be acceptable to issue a plan that shows this as a condition that we revise this plan to show this accordingly? Well, I think it's for a condition for site plan approval tonight, I think you have other issues on the site. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna make you guys happy, so we'll get there. But if I'm just throwing it out there, that, that is something that, of course, we can address. Why don't you revise the site plan for next time? Okay. I just want to know it's yeah. the other property lines as well. You have a bit. It's not just that one. It's the property to the west and the south is a little bit as well. Okay. And, and there is veg vegetation in some areas and a wall, but again, we will completely address that and satisfy that. Yeah. I mean, that's why we're looking at this plan is to, is I mean, it's an important part, part of this evaluation. So um, I, I think we could spend some time probably just talking a little bit about the circulations. I know that that's both central to the site plan. It's, it's kind of speaks to a part of the BAR, you know, to the to the architectural design, which I know you guys were um, you know, rightfully I think very proud of with this kind of this unique architectural feature. Um and you know, and I, I think just looking at this um and having used this site um and looking at the so just the angle of these of these new three islands, the what I still think is a really tight entrance and exit. And I, you know, I think that the, the staff comments and their letters were I mean, all spoke to this point. You know, the circulation plans, for the most part, like the one we're looking at right now, there's no cars filling up, right? And so I'm just imagining, you know, when there's when there's cars at these pumps, that clearance is really, really tight. So I think, you know, first of all, the 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 double entrance, I think, is kind of problematic. I think having, you know, um, just, just the bias, you know, the design, right? The bias of those of those pumps kind of speaks to to, you know, a, a one way entrance. But um, but even like seeing these diagrams with cars in place, like in a real world, I, I feel like they don't they're not going to work the same way that they do right now. Maddie, can you change the um, image so that you show the ones with the cars? It's car or car. Yeah. That's the drawing picture. There we go. Yeah. Right. And that's, and, and, and so like, you know, when I was looking at this, that's a car, right? That's a single, you know, sedan. It's a full size. Right. 
um, you know, when there's, you know, trucks you know lining up in the morning and filling up their, you know, their their cans with gas or, you know, you know a car with the trailer, um, like almost immediately this whole circulation gets stopped up. So that I mean, like, you know, if, I don't know what kind of response or thoughts you have. I, I don't know how that gets fixed in that, you know, in that lineup. It seems really like it could be a real problem. So we've talked this over extensively with the applicant, with the fueling company. Um, and this is the current standard that we're looking to keep from a financial aspect and other aspects that they can't change. However, we can change is absolutely make this a one way in, one way out. And we think that absolutely that will help the circulation tenfold for the site. Um, so the dive islands have to say that orientation for our site plan to work for us, but the circulatory aspect of one way in, one way out, we were strongly believing that, that will alleviate many things that could be caused by a two-way um, entrance and exit for the property. I agree with everything Seth just mentioned. But I still think even one way with cars at the pump stations, you have a big problem just getting around a car. That bump out on the lower right hand corner of the building, is that an overhang or is that part of the building structure? That would be an ADA accessible ramp. So there would be a raised curb with a reveal, the bump out. Above the, above the uh, pump stations. Um, a little bump in the lower right hand corner of that. Area. Is that an overhang? No. My cars will go under. No, that that is the ADA accessible ramp. So the the front door. I, door I okay. There so is that's an impediment to a car just making that same travel. If there's a, a car in that pump station which you don't show. What's the so width of that? To me, is a big problem. What's the width of that drive out? Yeah, to close point between the the pump and that um that ramp. Fourteen point two feet. Yeah, I we we had, we, we had yeah. it in our head. We were thinking, yeah. is there any way to even change the where the front door location is to come in the side just to gain that extra space? Because no one's going to park. You know, these people are going to be parked out, and it's going to you know clog up anybody trying to get through there. It just gives you more. It's room. not even just the that's an access ramp. You have to approach it, right? So it has right. to be some sort of walkway to that ramp, or a person in a wheelchair would have to. The way you have the drive going through that actually gets closer. You get diagrammed that to the building, and you'd assume there has to be some sort of access to get to that ramp. We have a fully um, accessible access aisle to the left of the ADA parking space. That's the top of the ramp, or that's the front door to the building there? Or, uh, that would be the bottom of the ramp. So you'd enter from the accessible space and then navigate going down, and then to the, I guess you'd make a right hand turn as you're going into the building. All right. So it's a uh... Okay, so the the grade at the entrance, so it's like a, the, the grade inside is, is lower than the grade outside that location. You see, uh, you're, you're ramping it's a, down it's a to slight, the front entrance. We're ramping slightly up to the front entrance. Okay. So that that's a little bit raised up. Yes. Yeah, I saw it almost like when you the access aisle where you show the arrow. I thought that was kind of like your ramp up, and the rest of the way you're kind of up full height, curve height, mm -hmm. and that's why I thought maybe there was the option of just reducing that sidewalk. To, to the side and give you some more room there. We we uh, looked into the whole yeah, changing yeah. the front door, but I think we're gonna try to call it the front door still. Um and it's staying there for now. So the front so that's where then you're gonna have pedestrian access to then the same drive aisle as the cars? Yes. I I, I mean I, they, they yeah, can I, I think from this the conversation is is, is is leading itself, right? Which is to say that's a really dangerous front entrance, like like taking all the circulation pieces aside, which I think, you know, the one way I think is a step in the right direction. But I think, you know, Bill's kind of like hit the nail on the head with this really with this narrowing. And now we're saying that's where everybody's going to be walking around there, around the ramp, probably even to get there right, in, you know, in front of where the cars are. Going to be. It's too tight. And I think with the door there, I don't see that working. I mean, this is going to be a very low speed site. Um, you know, no one should be barreling through here. Of course, you know, there's always exceptions, but we're, we're not largely concerned from the safety aspect of it, of it being you know, slightly raised in the front and the AD access the way it's proposed. I think the concern also is backing out onto the main road, get queued up. Like, like, like Seth had mentioned, you get one landscape, 
you know, truck with a, with a, you know, the mowers on the back and everybody's getting backed out because they can't get through, they're getting backed out into 9A. That's just another concern. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, totally. And it's and especially given that there's no bypass, there's no workaround. Um, and even with the especially with the proximity of those, it'd be interesting to see if there's a, you know, if there's a truck with a trailer on the north side of the northernmost pump, can anybody even get into the site, right? Like is can you, you know, to get into queue to kind of like make a U-turn and wait for an available pump. The pump could have used um invading the the would be helpful, but what are those? Three stacked oblong things right there, right adjacent to that car that's in the circle. Those are our underground fuel tanks. Oh, oh. So, sorry, sorry subsurface, yes. Okay. Conceivably, oh. could that car make a wider turn over those tanks to get through them? Yeah. Um, I'm pardon, I'm not following where they're okay. making the turn. Where the tanks are. You show that yes. car passing to the left of those tanks. The car can go to the right. You go to the right and just make that turn a little easier. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, what is the, the width between the front of the building and uh, the edge of the, uh, the lot to the uh, street? I would have to check my plan for that. That's okay. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> 14 feet between the, the ramp and the inside. So so we're showing 14.2 feet from the bump out to the cat of the um pump and then from the building face to the property line is 42.4 feet. How 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 uh, wide are your items? We're referring to the fuel pump islands themselves. Yes. I don't have that dimension on my plan, um, but okay, it could be about like five, five, six feet. Standard gas dispenser. Um, when I've seen tight gas stations like this, a lot of times they orient the islands to be parallel with each other. I, I can think of one that I live near that is like on the smallest piece of property that you could imagine from your gas station on, but because they have uh, they have more space in the front between the island and the, the street. They have enough space. I don't know. I don't think they have 18 feet between the front of the building and the island pumps, like the standard two parking spaces, but they have one way in, one way out. And it does work. Um, but so that was, I was confused too by the, by the store, the graph storage things. I was thinking that was a physical impediment that could not be drove over and it was being drove around. <laughs> so I didn't quite understand. But thank you so much for that. Thank you. Well, what is the what is the measurement of the pumps to the assuming is that the I guess the property line stop working. Yep. So I think all of our dimensions are on sheet two point zero in case anyone's looking at home. Um so we're talking about from the the pumps to the property line. You go back to that picture which showed the vehicles. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. So the, the vehicle is the back of the vehicle and someone pulls up to the pump, the back portion of the vehicle is still sticking up. So if some vehicle is saying here, and they have to access to this one, what's the space for them to be able to do the drive to? I don't have that dimension shown, but I did run that simulation and they can fit. But we can absolutely show that. Right. And, but it's like and that goes back to the if it's, you know, if there's a, you know, truck with a trailer or, you know, a box truck or, you know, a van or a large SUV, right? That dimension is not always going to be the same. That dimension could be very, very quickly become less than the, you know, than, than a passable distance. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I mean, there's more space on the top side, right? But the, but you eliminated that space by putting the ramp there. What what is sorry? And I don't know if we, this is one number we didn't put out there. I mean, is it a is it like a three foot six ramp that you have it drawn there? So you're like, that's like 18, 17 and a half, 18 feet between the pumps and the base of the building. From memory, it should be three like clear floor space at least. So at least three feet. Um, so three and a half would be considered the curb. So 
plus the 14.2, we're looking at roughly 18 feet to building face. That's right. So, I mean, it's the, that's to the building phase. So it's not like you have any clearance for, you know, if you don't want people sideswiping the building. Is there any kind of guardrail or, or pro pro protective curb right in front of the building? That was our intention with the curb is that that would be that element. I, I, is, you, yeah. Well, I was going to ask, because um, I know there was a, an, a request maybe to see them, to see a plan of the islands perpendicular to the property, but I think Eric's idea of them being parallel, you can reclaim a lot of the space that you're losing by having them diagonal and maybe it wouldn't be as tight. Is that possible it to is, see something like that? It is not. Um, we can't orient the pumps to be parallel at this time. How uh, come? Based on my applicant's request, as well as the fueling company, they have extensive research and they've talked about the marking aspect of it, of the diagonal pumps working for them. And that is what we're looking to do. I, mean, I, I I would the way I understand this plan is you're putting them diagonally to get more pumps and and I, our concern is yes you can fit three pump three islands in there versus probably you can only get two islands in there if you go perpendicular if you know if they're whatever if they're if they're parallel to the to the road surface you would you would lose one but we're also looking to see if the three actually fit and work in a safe way I mean, that's that's the, that's the conversation that we're having by parallel I. I, I took it to mean that they would be in line. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. would yeah. would they lose the third one? So get stuck in the middle one. Can't get through. People in the middle one might not be able to bag out. Well, they might be able to bypass them because. Yeah, because you have enough space. You might have enough space. Yeah. yeah. You know. I mean, Costco does that. I know the Shell on South Highland does that. Mm -hmm. So just as an idea of if they were. And hopefully, the larger of the vehicles would go possible to continue inside the gas tank that would be outside of the I'm not trying to dictate your plan. No, we're, we're here to discuss this. Is, thank you. Just to like reclaim that space, yeah. But I'm also curious what's happening on the site right now? Are they excavating tanks or doing testing? Is it Looks like a construction site right now. So we previously submitted an application for a cut full permit um, to remove the tanks, and that is the work that is ongoing at this time. Oh, okay. Excuse me, I don't know much about the history of the site, but uh, were there pumps there previously? There were. What kind of configuration was? Um, I think it, we have we should have an existing conditions sheet. Um, I think it's sheet yeah, one for now. Yep. So if we scroll down to the next sheet, please, we can see that we have two gas pumps um, kind of close to the property line. We have another gas pump just beyond by where the current front door is going to be. There's a kerosene pump adjacent to that. Um, and then another gas pump towards the um, southern property line all the way to page left. You know bump out. So we are reducing the number of pumps, but I understand that that's not the concern here. Because of the kerosene pump. Uh yes. I don't I don't think they want kerosene anymore. No, no, no. But that's the reduction, right? Mm -hmm. It's um and you're going and right now you've got sorry, I'm, if I misunderstood misheard you, but two two unleaded and then one diesel. Currently? Yeah. yeah. And so schematically having a third in line with the two lowers does not work for what reason? Um, in terms of the current site planning, I, from memory, I'd have to check back my notes, but again, there was just strong need for it to be the way that was currently shown. Right, would, we'd, we'd have to have that articulated, but it's also, you know, at a certain point, that that need is conflicting with what fits on the site and we need to kind of that's that's where the resolution mm -hmm. is is in that that tension there um okay um i don't know other board member questions or comments i i think we've kind of laid we've, we've set, laid the table so you kind of describe what the problem is and it's kind of your job now to solve it but i want to make sure that, just, that we're not missing anything else or if there are any other staff comments because i know we talk about the highlights, but if there's anything else that any of you feel like we should bring to the table, I know it's all in the memos right now, but. 
Yeah, those are two major issues. The lighting and the circulation across. Yeah, there's a couple of minor things, but it was big in circulation. Yeah, I mean, I think the one way could definitely help. I just am not sure that that's just, you know, it's not like we just, from what I'm seeing, that doesn't deal with it. And maybe moving the entrance around Thompson into having a bypass land at the top helps. I, I think these are all pieces that you need to kind of play around with. Um, okay. Uh, can I have a motion from the board to reopen the public hearing on this application? Eric Talbot, I make the motion to open, reopen the public hearing on this application. Second. Okay, any objections? No objections. That motion carries. We're now in a public hearing. Uh, is there anybody here from the public? Uh, I just think room uh, or on Zoom, you can use the hand raise function to speak to this application. And I don't see anybody. Um, so can I have a motion? to adjourn public hearing. Angelica Kinganis, motion to adjourn the public hearing. Any objections? Objections, that motion carries. Do you guys have any other kind of questions or directions from us? I think we've laid it all out, but I just want to make sure that you guys feel comfortable. Um, I think I think my big question, I know for you might have some thoughts too, but what can we do to make sure that we're giving you guys enough um, information and data to be comfortable with this moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, first of all, we are, we're looking for, um, you know, a circulation plan that works with with larger vehicles, more real, a more realistic, you know, um, diagram that shows what's actually going to be happening on the site. Um, I wanted to look at, at drive aisles that are wide enough to get two cars going back and forth on the same site, so you're not going to be trapping people inside. Um, I think you know Tony had a very critical point about how you how you're going to demonstrate that we're not going to create a condition that's going to back traffic up onto onto Route uh, Nine, um, and I you know so and and looking at you know all of the different ways you can achieve that moving doors around moving you know entrances away and and re and potentially reorienting the you know the the angle of the uh, of those pumps as well I think all of those things need to be on the table and I think if you um... I think also the if you decide to do one way and one way out, um, then I think all angles from the pumps, because there's a couple of your, especially the ones towards the southern, they're, that's going to be tough. If somebody's parked there, they have to make that turn. They might have to end up doing a K turn to get out of the site. So those are things that, you know, and then if you're proposing to keep two entrances, there was clearly going to be points of conflict if somebody's coming in and somebody's looking to leave. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you very much. And I have a motion from the board to adjourn this application. I have some motion to adjourn the application. I need a second the motion. Any objections? No objections. That motion carries. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Um, next on the printed agenda, and I just want to make sure does this printed agenda match what's online? Because I know there's a last minute change. Uh, 16 Camp Woods. Is that? Yeah, they've uh, they requested an adjournment. Yeah, okay. So that's so just for the record, in case depending on what agenda people are working with, 16 campus has requested an adjournment, uh, which pushes us up to item C on the printed agenda, which is 171 Croton Avenue. Um, this is a ongoing application uh, requesting the site plan and BR approvals for a second floor addition um, to create a new mixed use building. Um, so you know what it is? We don't have the uh, you don't have the participants view on this screen. Uh, it's yep. kind of hard to see who's who's around, but here we I go. I just moved uh, Pat it's over there. Are, yeah, sorry, there are two other names in the um, attendee gallery. I don't recognize either. So if you belong to the application for 171 Croton Avenue, please raise your hand. Okay, and Mr. Cotto. Okay, Mr. Cotto, you declined becoming a panelist. I'll try one more time. Okay. Um, all right, so while everybody's coming in, just uh, kind of setting the the table just kind of for, for where we are right now. Um, and we've, we've had, I think, extensive conversations on this project to date. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the site plan, about the parking, um, and... I, you know, there's, I think, some administrative steps that we could probably take tonight. I, I don't know if, if uh, Valerie, you can just kind of go. Sure. Through. So, 
So the um, the board specifically needs to ultimately um, refer this out to the village board for um, the payment in lieu of parking and to the Zoning Board of Appeals for zoning variances. But before it does that, it needs to um, finalize the seeker process and ultimately adopt either a pause deck or a neg deck. Um, for those who are new to the seeker process, if you say that there's a potential for a significant adverse impact on a project and you positive, uh, you do a positive declaration that starts an environmental impact statement process, right? So uh, the other alternative is you do a negative declaration, which means there's not going to be a significant adverse impact but that the applicant has provided you enough environmental information that you feel comfortable with making that final decision. I provided the board a part two and a part three to the EAF. That is based on the in information that we received from the applicant. Since we met on, since there was a site visit, there has been um, an issue on site dealing with like basically a sinkhole and I'll turn it over to Tony to give you more details in a minute. Um, but so I don't know if that is something that this board wants to weigh in on as part of the seeker process, or if you want to more or less separate it because it's, it's dealing with more like infrastructure and stuff. But I'll leave that open to you to have that kind of conversation in terms of the environmental impacts to the site. Also, because of that particular situation, um, I don't know if there's going to be necessarily changes to maybe having to remove a portion of the building or the entire building and whether that's going to affect any of the site plans that have already been submitted thus far. So Tony, you want to just tell them where we are? With yeah, that? So, so we met them on site. And there was a, there's a culvert running under the building. Um, it's, it appears to be deteriorating. Um, looks like the garage, some of the garage slab is, is, is the, some of the beams running over the, over the stream in the garage slab are getting a little deteriorated. So we met them on site. There's there's discussions ongoing. Um, I don't know how far they are along now about the agreement and who's going to be responsible for what. There's no easements found on the property as it is now. So there's actually no easements tied to it about when that work was done. Um, so, And just for clarification, those easements would be between the village and this property or correct if there was if one. there was yeah okay. so that's the thing you know village can't go onto a property and replace anything that there's no easement so there, there are discussions going on about that so our, our concern was of course they're going to be lowering the garage slab and you have this culvert underneath it <clears throat> right so discussing it if the work does have to be completed there might have to be structural exterior walls that span over this this culvert. And again, just just to kind of get all of this clarified, what what do we know? What the culvert is conveying? It's conveying a, a very large drainage area. I think it comes all the way down to Pleasantville Road, um, and it's a almost like a stream bypass as well as village stormwater is is draining into it. Okay. So surface mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the culvert was replaced from the, I think it's believed, the north side to the property boundary. But there was easements on the adjoining property to do that. Got it. And so, so is there work going on underway right now to try to identify if there is an old easement and, is, and where is that happening? I, I think that has been done in there. It just has not been located. Nobody's been, been able to locate one. Um, so... Sorry for grilling, but just these, these are important questions. So yes. as far as, you know, we, we there's a problem with culvert, it needs to be fixed. So it, in the absence of an existing easement, what would be the next step? Uh, it, it, it's just, is there going to be a need for to have an easement to make that repair? Because right now, I, I think that my, you know, like, like this, the, the big question here, and you kind of alluded to it, is we're talking about approving a, um, you know, a site plan and a, in a kind of a renovate major renovation to a building that absolutely could impact this culvert, which required, you know, which has carried stormwater and is part of the village drainage system. And we're at the same time talking about, you know, environmental impact. Um, I think, you know, you can't separate those two out. Like, I, I think we really need to have clarity on A, you know, how is the village going to make this repair? B, what is the repair? And C, how is that going to impact this project? Uh, Right. So, so 
I mean, depending how, how the route goes, we're going to want to see engineering plans. Right. It's going to have to be engineered, this, this culvert. But that repair, but that engineering and that repair is, I mean, that's village responsibility. Or is it not? Is it like I that's speak yeah. Okay, there, fair there's discussion about <laughs> it. I again, it's you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I think we do. I realize we have the applicant here, and you know these 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 questions. I kind of would like to hear you know where they stand on, on these questions. I think, and then and I also want to kind of acknowledge that some there were some additional submissions on the you know in terms of renderings. Um, I think it's fair to look at those pieces because. I realize this is kind of coming in a little bit later in the process than it normally would. Um, we've made, I think, otherwise good progress up to this point in terms of getting this project to a more resolved point. So I want to acknowledge that as part of this conversation, not just have it just be about this big problem that we're that we're trying to kind of grapple with at this point in the game. Um, right, yeah, of course. Is there any indication of that on the plan? Do we you can see it anywhere? No, it's never been on the plan. No. Right. No, this, and I think you know honestly, this came this came into the conversation when we did a site meeting, and and it was there was literally a hole in the ground outside the building. Yeah, sure. right. yeah you were there. Yeah. Um, so so that that this is kind of the part of part of that conversation. Um, so I, I don't know uh, who wants to kind of take it away on the application on the applicants team. Uh, just kind of. Give us kind of where you are with these questions and if you have any information that we don't have and um then we could also I, like i said i would like to walk through the new submissions as well just to kind of see if we can get to a point where that that portion of the application acknowledging that there could be some changes though uh you know you, you may have a better sense of how much or how how little you know knowing where this culprit is and how that might impact your plans yeah so uh, good evening everybody how you doing great um uh, yeah, so when we were there, we seen the culvert was uh, that hole. We had the meeting at the job site with the uh, DPW guys, and um, uh, you know, it obviously has to be repaired. Uh, where the culvert is, and as far as the elevation of the culvert, is not going to impact the the lowering of the floor. The floor is still above the height of where the culvert carries, so that shouldn't be a, a situation. But where the culvert goes through the building, um, existing should be fine because that the building wall is not being disturbed. But where we put the the handicap ramp, we're probably going to have to put a, um, you know, like a, a an arch bearing type of situation going across so we don't sit any weight upon upon the culvert. Something that we need to adjust, but. Again, we don't know how wide the culvert is. I don't know, you know, those type of things in order for us to 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 make specific on the plan, you know, that type of a detail. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I, I think that we we need a lot, we need the information. We need to have a better standing of the culvert. We have, you know, what what its condition is, what the repair for it will involve. Uh, and then, you know, and I'm not necessarily at the point where I'm, you know, where the, not just the lowering of the floor, but where are the existing foundations of the building relative to the culvert? Are those repairs going to disturb those foundations? Right? There's a lot of questions. And how does that impact how you address that back half of the building, which is of CMU construction? And this isn't, you know, you know I leave it up to, to, you know, village staff in terms of assessing this, this the safety um, and the structural integrity of those walls that you're, you're doing work and building on top. Um, you know, how is that going to, how is that all, all of those pieces of this, of this culvert discovery going to work together? Um, so I, I, I think that that's really important for us to understand before we kind of go anywhere with that. Um, so with, with that said, I mean, are, I would, um, I guess just concretely in terms of next steps, like how is this evaluation how is uh, you know, the, the culvert evaluation assessment, and is that being done by, is there a, a ongoing work on the village engineering end? How is that, what's what's happening next? As far as I know, it's it's it's, it's in discussions, I believe, with Stewart and the applicants uh, council, okay. I, I believe so. Yeah. 
as long as there's a process in place, I just, I, I, which is fine. And, and I understand that that's yeah. not, I'm not asking you, yeah. I already asked that question once. That wasn't the second question. It was simply, yeah. I, I, I just don't want to leave this totally open-ended understanding that there's that, that con but that conversation of, um, is, is ongoing. The resolution to that conversation yeah. is kind of, and, and the assessments that come out of that conversation are, are really what all of us, right? You guys on your end, from a design perspective and us from evaluating that design or what we're going to do. Um, I, you know, I, th I think it's, I, 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 like I said before, if, if there's a way for us to put the drawings, you know, the, the new submissions, the, you know, the, uh, those, those renderings up on the screen, I think it'd be useful to have that conversation as well to move that piece along. Um, I know they flashed up about that when we first opened things up here, Maddie. All right, so we had asked you guys to give us some kind of insight renderings. We have a better sense of, of what's changing and how this is um, going. So this is like not, is this is this material rendered or is this this is more just, just uh... No, there's, there's, it, it, it's hard to see, but there's material, it's brick on the, it's uh, the material here at the corner is brick. Okay. And uh, it's is a gray- Is that the color of the brick that you're proposing? So gray, it's a grayish color brick, yes. Okay. And the, uh, and, and and the rest is form. a stucco, a smooth okay. stucco. So that's 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 looking more head on from Croton Avenue there with the with the neighbor next door. And that shows I think clearly the relationship between the two buildings. I know when we were on site, we talked about that little alleyway that will that will remain between the two spaces. Mm -hmm. That's the little the little niche. It's a little bit darker brick, yeah. a little darker gray, so that it 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 dis kind of disappears makes a little bit of separation there so that we could access that's where the electric line comes down attached to the adjacent building so we don't want to we don't want to have uh have to disturb that okay. you get around yeah i mean this this is actually a, a useful for the conversation we were just having um i know you're talking about that ramping a new addition over that culvert area because i guess that cul that, that culvert is Kind of near, kind of between the uh, maybe that that second it's the, hopper. That single, yeah, the, the second single window just to the right of that second single window. Yeah, kind of like right in front of the car, kind of. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, because there is a whole second, right? Just structurally, there's a whole addition going on on the top of that. You know, what is you know, does not not does not appear to be a very sound concrete uh, block, you know, CMU wall. Um. Which is all be which is all bearing, right? You're saying that the ramp is bearing off and, and being installed over that culvert. So is so is that addition, right? So all of these things are going to need to be evaluated. Sure. Uh, I, I think from a from a VAR's perspective, I think this is a helpful image. Um, it'd be my my initial reaction was the cornice looks a little heavy. Uh, yeah. So 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 we agree. So on uh, if you look at the new drawing. I, we didn't have time from the, the renderer didn't have time to make the adjustment. So um, we eliminated a foot off the bottom of the cornice on, okay. on, the, on the new, on the new submission of drawings, but didn't have time to change it here. And, uh, and the corbeling disappeared. It's just, it's just trend. And that's stuck on the back of the building there too, right? Just the, yeah, correct. Uh, what is currently a block wall that's stuck. So that, 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 Right when you hit that entrance wall, that's where that stucco starts. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, and that uh, we talked about the fence uh, again. We didn't have time to change it, but you know, on the on the sub the, the the drawing submission, the fence is a metal fence, like we we talked about, um, like across the street. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And the pole, the pole here was there, but on on the drawings, it's being removed. Uh, we have the letter submitted from Con Edison. Um, that they're going to take the uh, the electric off the pole, and then we have to take the pole out. And is that paving accurate? Because now we, you know, there there's uh, it, you know, we can maybe we can look at the at the plans, but that look just maybe it's just the the nat the nature of that renting. It just looks like a lot of concrete and very little greenery um, on that side. I remember. Yeah, I think the, it's I think the it's the angle. We were on site was that it was almost too narrow of a sidewalk. So maybe it's just a perspective thing here. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, possibly. It'd be worth looking at that as well. 
I, 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 you know, I would like to hear comments from board as well. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot to see here. It's a new group. Well, I agree with your comments about the corners. So it would be good to see the revised um, renderings that are more similar to those ideas. I, mean, I guess it's sort of hard to evaluate it, not knowing whether it's going to need to change substantially or moderately based on whatever um, we find out further about the culture. But I do think it's an improvement over where we started for sure. I think, I think those, Maddie, those are the elevations at the top of that sheet. Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, you were you just went past. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. eight ten, eight ten. You can zoom in on those. Like, yeah, eight ten. All right, that's what you just said. Yeah. And there's no that that dental molding is is not there, so it's more of just no. a furnace. Okay, I mean that looks yeah. it's much cleaner, much cleaner, a lot simpler. Yeah. Not as busy. Sorry, I, I just the, the four stack windows to the left of the entryway are those of the stairwell or correct. That's the vertical of the stair. The stair goes up uh, uh up against the fit uh the facade wall and then turns and goes away from the windows. And they, so that's the help that's to help light up that whole hallway because it's not um needs some natural light in there. And the lower windows on the bottom portion of the building, those are the commercial spaces. That's in the garage. Gosh, so that's the garage, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess I'd like to see the windows in relationship to the, the layout of the, the apartments, because it's a little hard for me to tell what's going on with all the windows on the second floor. Yeah, there's almost one window all the way kind of on the far left, uh, the far left side of the drawing that almost looks like it's like on the end wall. Right. Like, I don't even know if there's enough thickness for the wall up there. Yeah, it's awkward. And relating the windows on the, especially if those lower ones are just for light in the garage, having some sort of alignment or relationship between the, those windows, just organizing that fenestration. Yeah, it's kind of weird. And I, you know, it, it, again, does it all go back? Like, I just don't see how this is how this is being built into that existing CME wall. I mean, I, I think we should just be honest and, and upfront in terms of if there's anything you expect it and your engineering has looked at it to to build that addition on top of that wall and. To poke that, to poke those windows in there, to, uh, to do all of this work with that as is. I don't know. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we have to do in order to reinforce that wall. Yes, it's about what it's sitting on. It's yeah, sort of, that's the foundation there because the CMU was in pretty bad shape on the uh, what's that be? Is that uh, going to be east eastern facade? Uh, I could see right through many places. It just looked like it was water damage. Yeah. I like the plantings. I, I think that that space, and this is kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but just what you provided is good. But I would also agree with uh, Chair Roy's comments about the front, uh, seeming like the sidewalks were rather, it was more concrete. And that is an area in just that particular small uh intersection that is quite heavy with concrete and impervious materials what is there happens to be the kinetic to the east um and i believe your neighbor also has a very large sidewalk front which is like i don't know if it's 20 feet wide but it's, it's so up there it's a lot of space
the last comment I ever had is they 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 keep doing a lot of really good work. Got it. Okay. Other other board comments. All right. Oh, that I agree with uh, Eric Kessler. It was a big improvement. Okay. Um. All right. So just procedurally, can we? Can, I have a motion from the board to reopen the public hearing on this application. So I have a motion to open the reopen the public hearing. Eric Scott, I second motion. Any objections? Seeing none, the motion carries. Um, all right. Is there anybody here from the public to speak to this application? You can use the hand raise function. We have one person left in the gallery. Um, if you care to chime in, you can raise your hand now. Uh, we have a raised hand from Mr. Cotto. Mr. Cotto, are you working on this application or are you speaking as a member of the public? Yeah, I'm, I'm the attorney for the applicant. Um, I'm a local attorney here in Austin for 35 years. Um, and he thought it was important for me to just be, you know, involved because of the covert issue and to speak to the village attorney on, on that issue to make sure that, you know, hopefully, you know, everything goes smoothly with that. Very good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, okay. And I, so I don't see any other members of the public. There's nobody here for the record. Um, so can I have a motion to adjourn the public hearing? Eric, I'll make a motion to adjourn the public hearing. I may be a second the motion. Okay. Um, so, you know, when we just went off, just to, I want to just kind of close the loop on this item when we kicked out the meeting, Valerie was this, this, uh, Discussion. Valerie talked about the um, the the secret process and you know, where where we stand with that. Um, I would like to hear, you know, if any board kind of comments right now. I, I think you know if, if there's it was a draft um, draft EA. Uh, it was a uh, part two. Part I mean, two. I can just run through the part two. We can put it up there. Yeah, I, I think that one of one of the concerns that I have, I'll just voice my concern. I'm happy to to you know, I, I want actually, I want to hear kind of board input. But I think that while we're looking at the, when we're looking at this culvert and stormwater runoff and kind of having these issues, you know, having kind of knowing that status, I think it would be good to know what the resolution to that is before we kind of move forward with the environmental. That, you know any kind of environmental assessment or determination in terms of secret. Um, the board can request more information from the applicant for base ultimate secret determination. That's also right. So I mean, let, let's put it up there. I think I think we should have that conversation here. And now sure, we can do that, and maybe we'll identify the exact areas that you want to more additional or more. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Is uh, this the short EAF document? Is that where I'm headed? Uh, it would have been probably one of the last. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, it's the second to last one listed. Yeah. Second to last link. The revised oh, drawings. Right there. Yeah. Are we talking about the one short? Yeah. Updated 523. Is that? Yeah, it's on, uh, on the, on Oh, I'm sorry. Did she put? I, I'm a little confused. Are we looking for an an environmental document? Yeah. There's a link. Yeah, the May twenty. Oh, you know what? Uh, uh, this isn't to throw. I'm not trying to say throw Jamie under the bus or anything. I think she accidentally put it under two thirty seven North Highland Avenue, SEAF, Part Two and Part Three. Oh boy. Okay. Yep. Hang on one second. Yeah. So we'll, we'll make that correction. In yeah, the, we'll make the correction in the, I think it was just, uh, yep, was you're right. She was busy it. posting things. A lot of, a lot of last minute yes. posts. Okay. There there we go. Go. Yep. All right. So I'll just kind of run through. So yep. the first question is, will the proposed action and the proposed action is technically the construction of the two additional units and site plan changes. Um, will the proposed action create a material conflict with the adopted land use plan or zoning regulations? And we are suggesting no yeah. or small impacts may occur. So no. Um, will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity of the use of land? 
again, we noted that as uh, small to moderate. Um, excuse me, uh, no or small impact. The other one is, will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? Um, right, I think, yeah. you know. Um, the other one is, will it have an impact on the environmental characteristics that cause the establishment of a critical environmental area? This is not within the LWRP or CEA. Um, will the proposed action result in an adverse change in existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking or walkways? I think to residential. Right. Yeah. So um, will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonable available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? Um, again, it's it's two units um, and they already have the existing energy infrastructure on the site. Um, will the proposed action impact existing public or private water supplies or wastewater treatment facilities? And the answer to that is no. Um, will the proposed action impair character or quality of important historic and archaeological, or architectural, or aesthetic resources? So, no. Will the proposed action result in adverse change to natural resources? Okay, so that's no. Um, will the proposed action increase result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or damage or drainage problems? And that's the one this where you know, if if the board yeah, now because of the certain conditions on the site, if you want additional information before making that final determination, you can. Right, and, and I think very clearly would be understanding the size, the condition, and the maintenance responsibilities for the culvert that's passing underneath the site um, would be critical for understanding that because. Of, right. And then the last one, I think, is a note of, again, will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? Right. So, so it's really that one that we just need additional, the board wants additional information. Yeah. Go ahead. Makes sense. Everybody good on that? Yeah. All right. Um, applicant, good on that? Understand that request? Yep. All right. Um, then with that... Can I have a motion to adjourn this application for this evening? Michael Aaron. Oh, hold on. Before you before before yeah. you do that, Mr. Mr. Roy. Yeah. Um, so so the are 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 progressing onward. So that I understand, until we get these answers, we can't go to the zoning board or to the to the town board. Correct. So right now, what we're trying to do is resolve the is, is kind of come to a conclusion with the CEPRA process. So, you know, understand if this is a you know negative or positive environmental impact in order for us to make that assessment, we need to understand, I think, as I articulated a moment ago, size, condition, uh, maintenance responsibility of that culvert so we can look more closely at number 10 on the on the short form. Um, and make sure that this is not going to be an environment, you know, that there's not a bigger environmental issue that we're not aware of. Yeah, just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Um, okay, yes. we're good. No, I, okay. We'll try that I, again. Aaron sends a motion to adjourn the proposition. Or tell me I second the motion. All right, any objections? No objections. That motion carries. All right, thank you guys very much. Um, oh, have a good night, everybody. You too. Okay. Um, okay, so we do have a couple of items. Um, yeah. of, this is um, the first thing I want to yeah. talk about is that 19 Campwoods, if you recall, last month yes. they were supposed to provide additional information, they did not. Yeah. So, um, this board might want to consider removing them from the agenda, and then once they're ready to compare back before the board, which address the comments. You can do so. Okay, so we've 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 asked that we've we've asked them. We've not really heard anything. We gave them a kind of an opportunity for right. the last for, um last gave them an opportunity before the last meeting. Um, any board member objections to removing nineteen? Just mean the, all it means is they would need to re-notice before they come back again. It just kind of right. wakes everybody else today. Rip it up just for a mind. This project is ongoing, especially given the passage of time. Yep. All right. Okay. No objections. We're good with that. Um, yes. Are there any no. other? Yeah, this is 19. Not, not. I know there's a there, on our agenda. We adjourned 16 water. That's a different project. Sorry, not water. 16 uh, campus. So 19 is in the. It's currently listed under uh, part four adjourned items. Um, anything else in the third items of note? No. no. Okay. 
Um, then we have part five of the agenda is just additional business to the board. Um, so the first item there is the Indian Brook Open Gorge Overlay. Yes. And I'll hand this off to you. So back in like 2005, <laughs> years ago, uh, the towns of Cortland, uh, Newcastle, Austinane, and the villages of Croton and Hudson and Austinane worked together on a watershed plan. And that watershed plan looks for the protection of the Indian Brook and Croton Gorge watersheds, both of which are drinking water supplies from or um, for both the village of Austinane. Town of Austinane is the Indian Brook Croton Gorge. I mean, um, Indian Brook, excuse me. And then the village of Croton on Hudson is the Croton Gorge watershed. So as part of that, after that watershed plan, the town of Portland um, put in for an intermunicipal, again, another intermunicipal grant to identify very specific uh, regulations to help protect uh, those watersheds, specifically additional uh, uses and development. So what um, what has um, what's before this board is that the village of Austinane is looking to adopt this intermunicipal uh, overlay. Um, the overlay itself, uh, Maddie, I don't know if you can pull up. There is, a, it says, a there's a, it's actually the very, actually, it's the very first uh, link under the Indian Brook. Yeah, and if you can uh, scroll into that map a little bit. So there is a very small section of the village of Austin that actually falls within the Indian uh, the Indian Brook Basin. Um, and that's the area that would, in the village of Austin, have these additional requirements. Specifically, it, it's the requirements to protect and restore natural water resources, um, implements uh, stormwater management practices, um, promotes sustainable development through additional land use and environmental regulations, and then also regulate certain activities that can take place in the watershed. For the most part, the, the village, village of Austin, the area that falls within that, is not really going to, um, the additional regulations really won't affect any of the properties because a lot of it deals with like septic systems and emptying out uh, septic systems, um, also additional uh, stormwater measures, but this for uh, the village of Austin already requires a lot of uh, stormwater control in smaller properties. Um, it also specifically deals with like wetlands regulations. And for the most part, there's no wetlands within, you know, that particular area. So, um, so, but, but, but still the village of Austin wants to move forward with this because it is in spirit of the intermun you know, intermunicipal cooperation and ultimately this will help protect the village's drinking water source. Um, I may need to excuse myself. I live in the area of Austin, uh, covered by the different city. Sure. Yeah. Oh. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know. No. Okay. So, and, and our role here is simply an advisory one to the board of trustees, right? So this right. is the, the board of trustees um, is looking to review and potentially adopt this. Um, this new district. So right. they're simply looking for your recommendations. I mean, they have like specifically prohibited uses or disposable like hazardous waste materials, um, dry cleaning, dyeing, printing, photo processing, like those types of uses, which are already not permitted in those different zoning districts within the, the village, you know, vehicle storage, yards, truck terminals. So things that could really potentially um, pollute, you know, your water resources. Um, also, in terms of there needs to be certain performance criteria, but um, then it's basically all construction activities that involve soil disturbance greater than 2,500 square feet shall comply with the stormwater management. This is already part of your requirements. So like some of this is just reiterating what you already have on the books, but in other, in some of the other municipalities, they still have the one acre minimum. Right, so this is now, they're now reducing their amounts to start capturing more stormwater. Um, and specifically, uh, septic systems must be pumped out at least once every three year period. Again, in the village of Austin, that's not really so much of an issue. Um, in the village of, uh, in the town of Newcastle right now, that is a big issue and a lot of people are really, you know, like that's one of the public comments that they're receiving is, wait, you're gonna make us, pump out our septic systems every three are years. All, so. Are all the properties in this district connected to the sewer? Yes, as far as uh, I know. 100% as far as Yeah. 
I mean, there could be one or two that yeah. maybe aren't, but right. having right now, like Westchester County recommends every three year pump out anyhow, okay. because that's just the way to make sure that you're not polluting, you know, and that's one of the biggest sources of pollution within the Indian Brook watershed. I was wondering, how does this affect the like existing gas stations within the area? Because like, for example, 237 Highland, they were hearing that earlier. Right. So that does not fall within this overlay. Oh, that property is down further on. It's okay. Um, not pretty far outside, but yeah, yeah, it's not far yeah, outside of it, but it is outside of it. Though. That's correct. Um, and in terms of, is I mean, is there is there any non-residential zoning in that overlay district? The only non-residential zoning you have is the OR district, which is the office research, which is right now is Atria, um, I believe, it, and. Yeah, Atria is in that zoning, and also the new vet. I think the yeah. New what? The new vet. Oh, oh. Yeah. That moved across the street. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. Got it. Yeah, that's right there. But again, that use would not be prohibited as part of this, and really, it just requires additional um, review and uh, during a site plan for, um, basically for any sort of. Uh, development proposal that's being proposed in those watershed regulations. And the rules speak a little bit to enforcement, right? Because this is this is a little bit different from his typical zoning where you're looking at use and building permit. And I, I guess I, I guess there I guess that it's a, just a question. So maybe we can speak to a little bit how the enforcement is laid out. So the enforcement, I mean basically it just notes that uh enforcement, this is going in the zoning. Yeah. So it would be enforced as required by zoning, but then also the code enforcement officer would have the ability to write um, particular violations for specifically for prohibited uses within that district. For the most part, the you're not going to violate somebody on not adhering to the wetlands water forces regulations because right. that would be before you anyhow as part of site plan approval. Right. So those are just additional regulations, additional review. Any, any thoughts or comments from the board? It's reasonable. That makes sense. I like drinking water. Drink water too. <laughs> um, I guess my only comment, and this is not something you can really do anything about, um, it's just the use of, of uh, fertilizers and uh, uh, herbicides or uh, insecticides. I know that's a big challenge with Long Island Sound because uh, the um, algae blooms and other challenges, but I don't know this is such a large area. And this, it's not something you can really control. People are free to go out and buy as many chemicals as they want by the fingers. Right, right. That's a bigger issue. It just and and I mean we do have like prohibit uh, prohibitions for like the storage and stockpiling of manure, other animal waste for use in agricultural operations, agricultural use of fertilizers and land applications. So like in pesticides. So it's like you know it's like larger terms, uh, lar larger storage of those chemicals are prohibited. Can you just explain a little bit how the kind of the municipal cooperation works with these? Because this is a set of rules that's going to be the, the identical set of rules, right? That's being prepared. yes. For the most part, there's like minor tweaks in each one of the communities, but yes, they would be. So every application. So if an application came before the town of Portland, which uh, is, you know seeking site plan approval and it falls within this overlay, they would have to adhere to the same standards that somebody else would be coming into the village of Austin to do. Right. I don't have any other comments. I, I, you know, I think that the requirements seem straightforward and, and they make common sense. All right. Is there any public outreach being done to people who live in the watershed? So uh, we and we have to still work on that. I mean, we have to call for a public hearing on this. So there will be a public hearing called for uh, this. And so at that point, I believe that there probably would be notification to those property owners 
I mean, part of it is also trying to educate them that it's a lot of the, you know, single family home is not necessarily something that, you know, going to be problematic. It's really more of like your intensive land uses. And it really does. And it's specifically also aimed at, you know, large tracts of land that have yet been, to be de developed. And so it, you know, encourages clustering um, and that type of development to kind of preserve as much open space as possible. But yes, it's a good idea and we'll make sure that we do outreach. Um, you have what you need to go back to the board with that. Yeah, so I can, I'll just, I'll, so I'll let the board know that you're recommending the regulations and that you suggest that there should be outreach to the property owners that are within that. Perfect. All right. Um, and then, so the last item on the agenda tonight is just a, uh, the comment, if there's any comments from the board, then it will now circulate on the last two agendas. Uh, the draft amendments to the architectural design guide. So just to reiterate these, this is a, a again, a kind of a, a guidance document. It is not a code, it is not a requirement, um, but this is something that the, uh, that the uh, HPC has initially authored, you know, quite some time ago, and they kind of, they tried to keep it up to date with current standards, specifically, um, this new set of amendments speaks to uh, solar panels, just as if that's something that they're seeing a lot now. Um, and it's just kind of a way of, of giving potential applicants kind of, you know, this is a good way to do it uh, if you're thinking about panels to allow for, for that. Not it's, not it's not specific just to the historic district, but also to the village overall for, for people to, to um, incorporate design you know, these design components in a in a kind of a pleasant you know aesthetically um, kind of non intrusive way so uh you know this was on the agenda here you know so here they're just kind of like look you know kind of talking about um you know colors orientation you know how you know, kind of conceal hide but yet still have these these elements um uh, talked about you know ramps and accessibility. Um, and then they also talk about the use of awnings. Um, that was, and which I actually, just for the record, thought was like a really interesting chapter, just kind of looking back at, at the history of uh, any of you, have already, any have ever kind of looked through the old photos of Austin from, you know, here we go. Yeah, these <laughs> um, kind of amazing, very utilitarian, right? Poor air conditioning, so ways of, of shading out your windows and just, um, so anyway, I just, this is really just kind of an opportunity if there's any comments or thoughts that, that you had when looking at this, um, that you want to give any feedback to the HPC as they kind of finalize and publish these documents. What was there? It looked good. I know some of them have like placeholder things right now, but, and like you said, the pictures were fun. So yeah. I feel like if like a regular person looking at this, they'd be interested in that. Right. Yeah, totally. I'll uh I'll, I'll reach back out to their chair and just let them know that that we that we that we've looked at it. There's some other comments. If you guys think of anything or see anything, that any thoughts or that, that you want to add, you can feel free to email me on that as well. Um, all right, or you guys are good. Yep. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Aaron Talley, make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Michael Harris, and second. Any objections? Any objections? Thank you guys very much. Well, I